Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris is an absolute delight and when I first heard about this film and made the decision that I wanted to see it, I didn't think I'd be saying this, but this may be one of my favourite films this year. Not just films released this year, but films that I have seen this year. I absolutely adored it. This will be a spoiler-free discussion. Maybe towards the end I'll discuss some spoiler aspects with a spoiler warning. But if you haven't seen the film, um, there's, there won't be any spoilers here. The film was released this year, of course, 2022. It's directed by Anthony Fabian, with a screenplay by Carol Cartwright and Anthony Fabian, based on the novel by Paul Gallico. I haven't read the novel. I hadn't heard of the novel. If you have read it, uh, I feel free to share how it compares, whether you prefer the book or the film. I don't think it's one that I'm going to read. Not necessarily because I've got no interest in it, but I prefer to do it the other way on. I love watching adaptations of books that I've read, not really a big fan of reading books that I've already seen on film because somebody has already planted the images in my head and it's not as exciting. But that's completely irrelevant to this discussion. The film is absolutely adorable. The description from IMDb sums it up perfectly without spoiling anything. And this says, quite simply, a widowed cleaning lady in 1950s London falls madly in love with a couture dress, a uh, Dior dress, and decides that she must have one of her own. She's gone through a bit of a rough time. She's had some pretty bad news about her, her husband, as the description said. She's recently widowed. And one of the women um, whose apartment she cleans has bought this new dress. And it's absolutely gorgeous. And our widowed cleaning lady, um, Ada Harris, played by the brilliant Leslie Manville, falls in love with this dress and it just sparks this dream in her that she wants to own one of these dresses. You get the very strong impression that she spent her entire life doing physically demanding jobs like cleaning, cleaning apartments and houses of people who have a lot more privilege than she ever could dream of. And she's in a difficult situation in life. Maybe it's time for her to just do something that's just for her. Even if she doesn't know where she would wear this dress, it's a dream for her to own one of these dresses and she goes about trying to gather the money for this which is very difficult of course and there are a lot of ups and downs with that. It was a kind of an emotional roller coaster with that, um, particularly at the racetrack. So I won't say any more than that but that scene was intense, really intense, beautifully shot of course as the whole film is and without giving away too much well, I was going to say without giving away too much, the title is Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. She does eventually, quite early on in the film actually, go to Paris and it's all about her trying to buy this Dior dress and all of the adventures that come with that. And she meets some wonderful individuals, um, namely Natasha, played by Alba Baptista, and uh, Mr. Favell, played by Lucas Bravo. They were fabulous characters. And I really adored them. Um, Archie is a brilliant character, played by Jason Isaacs. And we also have Pamela Penrose, brilliantly played by Rose Williams. I hate the character. She drove me mad from the first time she was in it. She's not actually in it too much. Um, for obvious reasons, most of this is set in Paris. She's um, one of the people for whom Ada Harris cleans. But the character was very well written, but very annoying. But with regards to our titular character, Mrs. Harris, I I loved her. I thought she was fabulous. She had a great spirit. She, I think she embodied the time in many ways. The only thing, if I had to find a point of criticism, and maybe I'm wrong about this, and please feel free to tell me I'm wrong if that's the case, but Mrs. Harris, when she spoke with people in France, in Paris, um, obviously they spoke English a lot of the time, but she would use a lot of idioms and colloquialisms and slang and coupling that with her accent. I feel like some of those things would get lost in translation, but that never seemed to be an issue. Everybody always seemed to know what she was talking about. And I feel like maybe that wouldn't have been the case, given her quite strong accent and her constant use of idioms and um, slang and things. I feel like just some of it wouldn't have been made as clear as it seemed to be. Maybe I'm wrong. I could be wrong about that. But that's just the only thing that I kind of picked up on as being maybe not perfect, maybe a bit unbelievable. I guess the only other thing that I didn't like was the dress, the main dress, the, the dress that she's being fitted for. I don't want to say too much more, but I didn't like it. 
I really did not like it. The other dresses, a lot of them were beautiful, really gorgeous. The pink dress, I mean, I would wear it. I absolutely would wear it. Don't have the money for it, but definitely would. But the green dress, I genuinely did not like. And I don't think it suited her very well either. But nevertheless, it was all beautifully done, beautifully shot. It wasn't... It wasn't one of those films that was emotional and tear-jerking from the get-go. But there was this constant feeling of, I guess, humbling throughout it. And it worked beautifully well. Ada Harris is a fabulous character. Really love her. Beautifully played, as I said, by Leslie Manville. Visually, it's gorgeous. I'm not sure quite how much of it was filmed in Paris. I'm sure I could find this out quite easily on, on IMDb, possibly. Um... But the architecture, nevertheless, was gorgeous. Apparently, it was also quite heavily filmed in Hungary, which is quite interesting. The dresses were gorgeous, even when I didn't like it personally. You know, everybody looked beautiful. Really, such a stunning, heartwarming film that, from start to finish, I absolutely adored. I guess a quick spoiler, well, a major spoiler now. I will discuss now something that happens towards the end of the film. And I guess I'll give my thoughts on the ending as well, actually. Because they could have done something that I think would have been too unbelievable. But I'm glad they didn't. So spoilers from now. I guess the main thing and the most shocking thing is what happened to the dress, to the green dress. I may not have liked the design of this dress, but I think it was definitely in Mrs. Harris's nature to lend that dress out. But I don't think she should have done it. And when I saw that dress, my heart just dropped. I knew something was going to happen because there had to be a reason for why she lent that dress. It had to do something to the narrative. And I knew something was going to happen, but I assumed it would be a spill or a stain, not what had actually happened to it. And um, beautifully shot scene, but horrific moment. And when she, I have to say, what didn't feel like in her nature is when she threw it in the water. Mrs. Harris does not strike me as a woman who would waste that fabric. Bearing in mind it was just a patch on the front of the dress that was damaged. That's still an awful lot of fabric that she could have used for other things. So I don't believe her actions there were fitting. But at the same time, yes, you could argue she was distressed, she was distraught, she just wanted rid of it. So maybe. But that was another thing that kind of stood out to me as being maybe not quite perfect. Um, and then, of course, the actual ending... Uh, when she got the pink dress, I just, I knew, I knew it was coming. There was something about it, the way, when we saw the dress um, the second time, and we could see that it was still around and it hadn't left the building yet, there was just something about that that told me, that we're not, we haven't seen the end of this dress yet. And I have to say, it is one of the most beautiful dresses I have ever seen. So I'm so glad. And I just thought the ending was gorgeous and Archie was fabulous. The thing where I said they could have done something and I'm glad they didn't, it was regarding her various potential romantic relationships in Paris. They could have run with that. They could have had one of her suitors or one of the gentlemen she met turning up at her door. It would have been a bit too much of a stretch, I think. And I'm really glad that that's not what they did. I think the ending was gorgeous. It's beautiful. It's enough to fill anybody with hope. It's about having dreams when times are difficult and going for those dreams, however daft to other people they may seem. A lot of people did scoff at her for wanting to spend £500, a lot of money today, never mind then, on a dress when she was just going to be cleaning and not really going out many places. But she, she held on to that dream and she had a real adventure in the process. And it's beautiful. I was slightly welling up. It's genuinely... An emotional film for all of the right reasons. As I said, I didn't think I'd be sitting here saying this is one of my favourite films of this year, but it absolutely is. I, needless to say, 100% recommend Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. This is how films should be done. It's absolutely beautiful.